hello, blah, 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 blah. hello, 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 welcome. We have a whole new environment today. This is my office space. This is where I do most of my work. I have my Cintiq behind me and I have a desk that folds up so I can work on my iPad here. And this is where I do most of my stuff. And today we are going to be doing a video that I get requested on a lot, which is how do you do your vintage style in your artwork? So I'm gonna show you how I do it today in kind of like a process -y process tutorial vibe. So we're gonna do that today. And I'm gonna show you based on the piece of art I am doing is the third installment for my Organic Anarchy series that I'm doing, which is kind of going to be a big drop that I'm planning on dropping by the end of March or early April. And it's all cottage core punk <laughs> vibe. Uh, I have a little more of an explanation on my Instagram on where I was going with it, but I have basically this kind of theme that I'm doing and I'm planning on dropping a bunch of products in that theme. Actually, the logo for it was made by my best friend of 20, oh gosh, more than 25 years at this point. <laughs> We've known each other forever. She's basically like a sister to me and she's an amazing designer. You should check out her work when you get the chance. I will provide links in the little commenty artist boxy type thing down below. She always blows me away with all of the stuff that she does. So we are going to do the third installment, which is a peak bit, a pea keeper. A beekeeper. A beekeeper girl. The first one was a gardener. The second one was a girl with chickens. And this time it's gonna be a beekeeper girl. I would love to do beekeeping, except my husband is deathly allergic to bees, so I'd rather him not die. The chicken girl that I did is because I really, 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 really want chickens. Especially silkies. I really want silkies. Anyway, this is what we're doing today. The quick summary to this is I'm going to show you kind of some reference images that I pulled that inspired me for this. We're going to speed through the sketch. We're going to speed through inking and probably going to speed through coloring for the most part, but I'm going to touch upon some tips and tricks on vintage coloring or how I go about that. I want to preface this by saying the best way that you can get a vintage style is research. There is some weird thought process, pervasive thought process in the artist community or when you're beginning to draw or get into art or whatever that you don't need reference or you don't need reference material or referencing is copying or if you're referencing something you're less of an artist stop it <laughs> this is not true this is a blatant lie anyone who says that doesn't know what they're talking about every single artist i have ever met in a professional setting uses references in fact every studio i've ever worked at when i did character design on archer my leads wanted to see a reference folder before i did anything they wanted to see what i was pulling as inspiration now reference doesn't mean copying that doesn't mean tracing it means looking at stuff that inspires you or inspires the piece or the vibe that you wanna go for. A lot of times artists at studios will set up mood boards. They will set up folders full of images. These things are there on purpose and they're there to help guide your style, guide what you're drawing and keep you focused and on the right track so you know what direction you're going in. Everyone in a professional setting uses references at some point. So if you're starting out, get to using references early. It's honestly a lifesaver. That being said, I have talked a ton of times on Pinterest and how much I love it. And you're going to hear me talk about it all the time. So get used to it. <laughs> I use Pinterest as a living mood boards. I will have saved boards 
for each thing that inspires me. So I have a whole board dedicated just to this kind of organic anarchy vibe. And a big tip on getting that vintage style in regards to the reference is look at old art. Like look at art that inspires you that you really like. Look at it, literally zoom in as much as you can. Like break down how they did it. Look at how the brush strokes are. Look at the color palette. You wanna study it as much as possible. Just like if you could bathe in it, that's what you should do basically. Like you wanna be able to take it and look at everything. Look at how the line art is. Does it use line art? Is the line art thick or thin? Coloring style, is the paint thick? Do you see a lot of brush strokes? Do you not see any brush strokes? Is it very crisp? Is it very clean? A lot of vintage art that I reference is usually from the 50s. And one of the things that I feel gives it that vibe is making it look kind of distressed and old and worn because that's how we see 50s work now. We don't see it when it's like freshly made usually because I mean, it's not the 1950s. So what gives it that vintage vibe is this distressed kind of worn look. So a lot of the times maybe there's ink bleeds or something. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that all work in the 50s was obviously done traditional. There was no digital work. We didn't have computers really back then. So everything was painted, everything was done with pens or pencils or whatever. You wanna find brush packs that mimic those styles and that look. Also 30s, 40s, and 50s in regards to printing, whenever anything was printed multiple times, sometimes things could kind of get off register, which means the color was laid down and then when the line art was laid on top, it wasn't perfectly aligned. So you might see a little bit of color shift out from the lines, which is something I do manually. Sometimes I'll go into Procreate, do my color layer, my line art layer, and literally go into my color layer and just like oop, shift it over like a little bit <laughs> just to give that vibe. So look at the art styles that inspire you. And I'm not even talking 50s. Like if you are really into like the pen drawings from early 1900s, just collect a ton of them and sit down and just look at them like detail zoom in and see like okay how did they do this what did the pen style look like how thick were the lines did they do a full continuous line or did they skip spots you want to really study how they did it and then what you can do afterwards if you want to practice just do practice copies they're called master copies in the art community, which is a way for artists to learn how someone else did something. And this is supposed to help you connect your eyes to your hand muscle memory wise. All right, let's get to it. I do most of my work despite having a Cintiq behind me. I actually do most of my work on my tablet. It's an, uh, I don't know what generation it is. It's almost like four years old at this point. Um, I also have the Apple Pencil and I work on Procreate, which I, not sponsored, I love Procreate. It's my favorite program. It's so user-friendly, it's so convenient. <laughs> like it's just, it has such good settings and all of their updates consistently just blow me out of the water. I can't believe how affordable it is. Like it's affordable. It's it's great. I tell people who ask me on what they should get, I say if you are, if you're looking for something that you want to do more, just sketching and drawing on the go and everything, definitely get it the iPad with the Apple Pencil. Again, not sponsored. This is just my recommendation. I spent about this plus the Apple Pencil and Procreate was maybe like a little more than 500 which is better than the Cintiq, which was when I bought it, and I mean, this Cintiq is about eight years old now, was about two grand. <laughs> now, the Cintiq is great. I use it for more professional work when I have to work with really large, large files. The one thing with Procreate that is the only downfall, and honestly, I can understand why you have layer limits 
based on how big your file size is. And I get it because you have really like limited space on here. So you have to limit it in some way, shape or form. So I understand why they did it that way. So on my Cintiq behind me, I use Photoshop and obviously you ha can use as many layers as you want. So, or I use it for Illustrator or editing or whatever. Like this is my heavy duty machine, <laughs> I guess behind me. But to be honest, Nine times out of 10, I do my work on this. I never knew I could simp for a program, but I do, and it's Procreate. You're going to transfer to... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Whoopsies. Um, anyway, we're doing it through this bad boy camera shift time. Okay, let's get into it. So the first important thing that I always do is I look up reference images. For this one specifically, I wanted to do a vintage beekeeper vibe. So I looked up a lot of Victorian or early 1900s, 1910s reference images. And so I have some and here's a cool trick in case you didn't know. If you want something for reference, you can pop it on over here and drag it to the side and adjust how much you want to show it. But I kind of wanted to do a combo between this 1910s style work outfit and these beekeeper women. And I wanted something along those lines I really liked these hats, these beekeeper hats. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna speed through my sketching and speed through the line art and coloring process just so I can show you kind of how I get to the vintage part of it.
Now we are at the point where I start adding all of my vintage stuff. I have colored her. I used the oil painting type style. I was kind of loose with my brush strokes so it kind of gave this like painterly effect. I painted the line art. I think you saw me going in. I actually painted right on top so you can see like if we zoom in I painted over it. This makes the line art softer. So now I'm going to do a few things. The first thing is since I started working on this inside of this uh, texture pack. I'm gonna turn the texture pack on. Again, this is from Retro Brush Supply. They give you this pack when you upload it into Procreate or download it into Procreate. I put it over on top and then you can adjust each section, each layer, how you want, whatever makes it look better um, to show you kind of, it, it's kind of hard to see, but it does do changes. So, you know, just messing around with, with these layers. Let me see. So that gives it kind of this textured look. Now, if this is the next step I do, I go to my line art layer. I duplicate it above the original one. Now I take this line art and I go to hue saturation and what I'm gonna do is just bump this completely up to red. Um, what you might have to do also is go into color balance and you literally just want all of it to be completely red. Just like the whole, all of the line art. Remember, this is a new line art layer. It's not the original one. We duplicated it. So do that. Go back to saturation. We're gonna bump it up again. Make it bright red. So it should look like this. If you can see, it looks weird. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. Color burn. And I'm gonna take it and just push it slightly off you want it to look a little off, but not anything super crazy, just like very, very slight. So that you have this bleed kind of look. And I do this because vintage printing would overlay multiple colors sometimes to get darker colors. And sometimes they wouldn't register and sit like perfectly on top of each other. So you would sometimes see like a rim of, you know, a red or a blue or something. So then I'm gonna drop the opacity down. Sometimes I'll go into the regular one and move it to multiply, but I don't have a hard and fast rule with this. It's just whatever I feel like looks better. Sometimes I think it looks better as multiply. Sometimes I think it looks better as normal. Sometimes it really doesn't change that much. I think I kind of like it normal because it's softer. So now it kind of looks like this. This is only a Procreate feature, this next step, so I don't know how to duplicate this in Photoshop. So turn off Alpha Lock. So now we're gonna do it to both of these line art layers. So the red line art layer, chromatic abrasion, displace, and I'm gonna zoom in really close so you can see. And we're just gonna blur it like ever so slightly like that and then we're gonna do the same to the next layer this our original line art layer chromatic aberration displace blur it just ever so slightly like that and you can see now we're already getting this like bleed and the red kind of helps as well. And also, if I, I often default to red, but you can, you don't have to do red. I just find red is usually a very retro type vibe. Sometimes you can um, do other colors like uh, pink or orange, yellow, 
Those are normally like more retro-y colors. I like to go kind of like this reddish color. So we've blurred that. We have our texture on. We've messed with that a little bit. So now this is one step you can choose to do. You don't have to, but, um, and it depends on the piece. If I want something to look a little more graphic with like flat colors, usually I'll do this, but with more painted stuff, I won't because if you think about the actual process that it was done in, if the piece was painted, you usually wouldn't have such a strong registration shift, but I'll show you anyway. So like if we're, we're gonna select all of these layers and I'll show you just like shifting it slightly over like this kind of gives a little bit of a vibe and sometimes I'll blur out these layers as well, but I don't wanna do it for this one. So I'm gonna leave it the way that it is. Now, um, this is the part that is very fun. What I'm gonna do is make a new layer and go to the Retro Supply Company Pens and Print, and they have a whole bunch of all of these different types of texture brushes. And I'm gonna go to some of these, like Erosion, Destroyer is one I use. I use a lot of these actually. But what we're gonna do is we're going to distress the edges, cause that gives it kind of that worn look. And I'll do it in like a vibrant orangey color cause we're gonna play with the layer styles as well. So it'll look weird in the beginning, but this is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna make my brush really big, drop the opacity a little bit. And we're just gonna kind of stamp in. It doesn't have to look, you don't want it to look perfect because the whole point is an aged distressed look. So distressing things isn't very purposeful. <laughs> you want it to look kind of random. So I'm just going in with a bunch of these brushes, softening some spots up, you know, just tapping in. And this is the part where we try to figure out what looks good. The, again, this is kind of just messing around to see what looks good. So I'll try multiply. Oops, multiply and I'll drop the opacity a bunch. See now it's not like a bright orange. It just kind of looks more like darker edges. Uh, color burn, darken, those are usually the ones that I mess with. I think I like multiply. And then I might layer up a f doing this a few times. So I'll go to maybe heavy abrasion and maybe I'll go a little darker because I want to make some parts darker. So I'm just gonna do some spots in the corner. And then just kind of, and again, this is, I have no like perfect way to do this. This is just kind of messing around <laughs> until you get something that you like. I'm literally just tapping quick strokes, trying to stay darker on the edges and then fade it as you go in. And then I'll do multiply again, drop the opacity. And you can see that it's starting to get this kind of rough, weathered look. Now we're gonna add the lighter part. When you look at worn illustrations, there might be spots where like the ink has come off a little bit. And so that's what I'm gonna try to replicate. So I'll normally just eye drop the canvas color. And it's okay if it's really bright. Sometimes I'll even make it a little lighter because we're gonna drop the opacity later. And again, this is literally just like tapping spots nothing super detailed. I like to kind of wear down the corners as I get closer to the page because I feel like that makes sense in a way like oh the closer it is to the corner the more beat up it might be. I use the light abrasion usually for that because it's soft. You're just kind of tapping whatever looks good. And then I'm gonna go to ink flake or scuffing. I'll usually go up to like a brighter white and add some scuffing texture like this. Just dot it around and some more dots. Then we go up in here and we're going to do either light in or screen or add is usually what I mess around with. I just try different ones to see what I like. 
And remember, it might look weird in add, it's like really bright, but if we drop the opacity, then all of a sudden it's not as bad, right? And you just get this like subtle, subtle texture look, which is what I like. And at that point, I usually kind of just mess around with my layers a little bit more, see if there's anything I wanna add or change. I might sometimes go into these multiply layers and mess with the color in hue and saturation to see if maybe there is a different color that I prefer more. But it looks like I want to stay with like this orangey color. I hope this video was informative and helpful. Let me know if you want to see more process videos or tutorials. I had fun kind of showing how I do this. All of the links to all of the brushes and textures and stuff that I used will be in the little YouTube box thing down below. I hope that this was informative and look for my organic anarchy drop that I'm going to be doing probably by the end of this month or early next month. Leave a like and a follow and comments or whatever you feel like leaving. Thank you for watching and I hope you had a good time. Bye-bye!